There has probably been about a million videos on the best and worst animated episodes of Dragon Ball Super flooded throughout YouTube, but I've never seen anyone touch on Super's storyboarding. For those who don't know, an anime storyboard is essentially the skeleton of the episode. It's a critical component of an episode's visual language, it's what determines the cinematography, the acting, and perhaps most critically in a show like Dragon Ball, it determines the choreography and framing of the action. The anime Animation is of course still incredibly important, and the quality of an animator's work plays a critical part in how well an episode's storyboard is executed. For example, Yukio Kaizawa is one of the most talented directors and storyboard artists at Toei, and his work on episode 35 of Super is very strong as far as composition goes. It's packed with unique angles that help establish the scale of the fight, and there are great facial expressions for the more comedic moments, but it's also filled with some hugely challenging challenging, extreme angles that the animators clearly struggled to translate to the screen as intended. As a result, this episode is nowhere near as strong as it could have been. In the list I've put together today, I'm not just taking into account the raw storyboard for an episode, I'm also looking at just how well it was executed. Did they do the storyboard justice? So without further ado, let's jump in at number 5. Kohei Hatano's episode 38 is one of the first instances of a super fight having a dramatic impact on me. This episode is all about establishing Hit as a terrifying threat at this tournament. Hatano's storyboard realises this idea wonderfully by putting a real emphasis on dramatic low angles. From Vegeta's first move that sends him flying, Hatano uses a panning shot that shows Hit looming over Vegeta and this is very much a running theme. Even in dialogue scenes, the camera is placed sinisterly low and Hit looms over the frame. Again, when Vegeta's totally down, another dramatic pan is used and you guessed it, Hit is looming over Vegeta. He is a terrifying threat, absolutely demolishing one of the series' main characters, and the board delivers that so convincingly. The action is remarkably well done too. In Vegeta's fight, there's an emphasis on single blows, which is backed up nicely by some powerful compositions that definitely make for nice screenshots. I really love the finale punch that's composed dead center in the frame with the horizontal effects cutting the screen in half. It's such a powerful finisher, and the shot that follows uses a great canted angle that helps establish the distance between the two, both figuratively and literally. Goku's fight is very different though. The angles become far more dynamic, but much like the script demands, it frames Goku in powerful positions this time. Whether it be Goku pouncing at hit or dropping down from above, he's always the most commanding part of the composition. He might not necessarily be winning the fight at this point, but hit is no longer being framed ominously. Any of the threatening visual language from the first half is totally gone, which works great since it leads nicely into Goku finally landing that single blow to wrap up the episode and let the audience know he has a fighting chance. It's such a great episode and is a real textbook case of how a storyboard can control the atmosphere of the action and kind of manipulate your perception of the events without actually saying anything. One of the runner-ups for this video is Hatano's episode 56, which also uses many of the techniques I've spoken about here. Next time you watch it, check out just how often black is above everyone. Coming in at number 4 is Ryota Nakamura's episode 65. For those who don't know, Nakamura was made Dragon Ball Super's series director along with Tatsuya Nagamine for the start of the universe survival arc. He was also responsible for some fan favourite episodes prior to this one like episode 39 where Goku uses the Kaioken and episode 57 where Goku and Trunks face off against Black and Zamas. He's one of the most talented staff on Super, but for me, episode 65 stands as one of his absolute best. This episode is the first time we see merged Zamas in action, and good god does Nakamura take the godly themes to the absolute max. Zamas is framed so high above everyone in this episode, he is an immovable figure that lights up the sky, and Goku and Vegeta are made to look as small as possible at every opportunity thanks to these fantastically extreme angles. Notice how even when he's throwing beams around, he never once loses that stature. Moreover, in almost every close-up, Nakamura 
Kimura has Zamas looking down his nose at everyone too. This is perfect characterization through composition. It really doesn't get much better than this. Another aspect that Nakamura does very well is establishing the chaos experienced by the survivors in this timeline. He makes great use of shadows and close-ups of people's feet as they're running away. It's unnerving, it's disorientating, and that's exactly the atmosphere this episode needs. In the second half, where the action ramps up, we've got great godly compositions where Zamas catches Goku and Vegeta's fists. Again, like I mentioned earlier, he's entirely immovable. When things start to go wrong, we've got great low angles for the beam struggles the scale needed is realized perfectly. And of course, there's no way I could round this up without mentioning the classic Obari pose as Trunks draws his sword. Episode 66 might have been packed to the brim with great animation, but Nakamura's board here is, in my eyes, significantly stronger. You definitely won't forget the visuals in this one. The runner-up from Nakamura's episodes has to go to episode 75. From all the wonderful action to the melancholic atmosphere in the second half, it's an episode that reminds us that the treatment of downtime episodes is just as important as anything from the major story arcs. Number three has to go to episode 110. This is from one of Super's newest directors, Masato Mitsuka, who is one of the absolute best additions this series has ever had. And spoilers, they also hold the number two spot. Super Special was of course broken up into two episodes, 109 and 110, and while both were very well storyboarded, Mitsuka's 110 is just that touch stronger. After Goku is seemingly defeated from being hit by his own Genki Dama, the atmosphere surrounding the events is very ominous. Mitsuka's board conveys this really well by utilizing a whole bunch of dynamic ultra-wide shots of the damaged arena. It sells the gravitas of the event perfectly, but the clincher is absolutely Absolutely on the way he frames Beerus throughout this entire moment. The camera is kept very low and Beerus's face is totally obscured. He's pushing your eyes onto Beerus's subtle movements, like his hands shaking, his teeth gritting. One of my favorite parts is where he opts to have the camera entirely out of focus aside from Beerus as he stands behind the other spectators. It isolates him from everyone and that's so critical for this moment. Just before Goku emerges, he has the arena's son pass behind the pillar and that's such a great little visual cue that something's about to happen. From here on out, it's just perfect. You have Goku all silhouetted just before the big reveal, which he draws out nicely by only showing his back for quite some time. Of course, the fight itself is just packed to the brim with great angles, and if you've seen my breakdown of this episode, you'll know that the very talented animators on board here 100% delivered in bringing this board to life. Mitsuka understands drama, he gets tension, and clearly understands action. He's a wonderful talent to have on board, and with only three episodes to his name so far, I cannot wait to see what he does next. Chugging along with this Mitsuka train, the number two spot goes to his work on episode 94. This utilizes pretty much everything we saw in 110, and while the board is certainly not as entwined with the narrative as that was, the actual angles and sheer variety of scenes pushes it a touch above for me. Muten Roshi hanging out with Karin and Yajirobe has him reflecting on his time training there as a youth, along with some pretty spooky talk about this being his final training. Mitsuka frames the scene with an emphasis on the details in the environment, which narratively is tied into him reminiscing, but it's also part of playing into the audience's nostalgia too. While it ends in a funny little gag about how he can't fly, the scene's impact is not lost. Much like in the last episode with Beerus, the discussion between the Gods of Destruction over Frieza utilizes similar framing where the focus is on canted angles and close-ups of certain parts of the body. Again, it's unnerving and a pretty common but very effective way of creating an uneasy scene. The second half of this episode is where the board really shines though. When Goku notices something within Baba's palace, Mitsuka focuses the camera on the reflection of the water as Goku walks towards it, which is just genius. As he gets inside, his talent for atmosphere shines through once again. We get a focus on the environment, holding shots on the candles before they eventually blow out and Freezer appears. These are such cool little details that don't say much by themselves, but as you can see, they absolutely 
really elevate a scene when used together. The dialogue between Goku and Frieza is just so perfectly framed. The camera is so intimate, but it's also at a weird and uncomfortable angle, so it's kind of tense. The great expressions from Yuichi Kurosawa's animation only elevates that further. Once the assassins arrive, the episode ramps up once again. We've got great looming crowd shots as they surround the palace. And of course, the star of the episode, Frieza's transformation. Honestly, I feel like it speaks for itself at this point. So many great angles. It is such a cut above the movie. Coming in at number one though, this is an all-star episode bringing together the two series directors Tatsuya Nagamine and Ryota Nakamura, along with a young and very talented director Megumi Ishitani. The first half of this episode is from Ishitani, who being so young was overseen by Nagamine. Her storyboard is absolutely incredible. The opening scene between Frost and Champa uses silhouettes very effectively, and I love the framing of Frost entirely out of the frame as he bounces down to Champa, who won't even turn his body towards him initially. The best part of this is of course the use of a flash of light to seamlessly transfer between the past and present. As Frost approaches on Kame Senen, we get a whole host of unnerving angles as he tries to work out where exactly he's approaching from. Of course, when he does appear, it doesn't go too well, and the storyboard certainly emphasizes that with some powerful low angles. I particularly like the spiral as he's thrown away. That shape is a bit of a running theme throughout this episode. I can honestly break this thing down shot by shot. It's just filled to the brim with perfectly composed shots, whether it be interesting looking action, powerful expressions, unusual angles, dynamic angles, and whatever else you could think of, it's all here. It managed to turn what could have very easily been a remarkably mediocre episode into one of the best in the tournament. It has drama, it has tension, it has emotion. It's the perfect package as far as storyboarding and direction goes. It's the type of approach I hope we see when this arc's finale finally rolls around. This level of master direction combined with the best animators this show has to offer could very easily bring about Super's best episode. Thanks so much for watching, I hope this video was interesting, and if you weren't familiar with storyboarding previously, I hope it's at least opened your eyes to just how important it is, and how much it can really elevate an episode. With that in mind, let me know what your favourite storyboards are down below. For all of Super's early animation issues, its storyboards have been its strongest aspect since day one. There's a stack of episodes I couldn't cover today, so let me know what you enjoyed and if there are any that you think deserve a spot more than what I added here. Be sure to rate the video, subscribe if you're new, and as always, I will see you next time.